Okay, so day three of analyzing the writer's craft. Our goal today is readers notice and understand how the author uses personification. So personification is our big word today. So be thinking about that as we go along. So we're gonna define personification. This comes from the dictionary. The attribution of a personal nature or human characteristic to something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality in human form. So it's a very fancy way of saying that you can take human traits and attach them to things that aren't human, okay? Kind of like how we were taking before, siblings like or as, we were attaching a lot of like non-human things to human beings or other, other objects, right, that were different. Um, we were using mostly people with the Firebird book, right? It was taking like the weather, taking sunlight, taking all these other things and comparing it to a dancer, a person, right? You don't have to, when it comes to similes and stuff like that and metaphors, you don't have to use just people and other things. You can use different kinds, right? Like they said, like you could compare um, a car to an animal. You know, that car is as fast as a cheetah. You know, you could do something like that, right? So you don't have to necessarily just do people, but a lot of times authors do compare other things to people. But this would be the reverse, more or less. You're taking human qualities and comparing it to non-human things. So we're going to read a small excerpt from Under the Quilt of Night. Runaways like us must hide in daylight, so come morning we crouch in the bushes till night. It's hot, sweat dribbles down my neck, thorns rake my arms and legs. In the still afternoon, mosquitoes whine and feed, just like the overseer's children did. All I can do is wait for the cover of darkness. Oh, if only I could dance into the open and sing so loud the stars would hear and hurry out to guide our way. Now, for those for context, Under the Quilt of Night is a story about a boy who is escaping slavery. So Underground Railroad, maybe you've heard of it. That is what this book is about. It's about a kid escaping slavery. And so that's where this page comes from. All right, so thinking about personification now. Let's analyze this text. What do you notice about the way the author writes about the stars and the dark sky. So let's go back. What's the way that the author writes about the stars and the dark sky? Zoe. Cover of darkness. So when he's describing dark, it's covering. Okay, what about the stars? Wesley. The stars are here and hurry. Here and hurry. Yep, so that's what we've noticed about what the author is describing, and we've also just answered the next one. What do the star, the stars and dark sky do? The dark sky covers, and the stars are hearing and hurrying, okay? Are these things that the stars and sky can really do? No. Does the stars hurry no. or hear what we have to say? No. no, they don't. And the darkness doesn't really cover us, right? You don't necessarily feel the darkness covering you kind of like a blanket being put on you, right? Darkness doesn't do that, it doesn't cover you. So, let's go to Letters from Rivka. Remember that book we pulled from uh, earlier? This is page 82. Um, in this one, he's writing another letter. Quickly I pulled on my clothes, tying my kerchief with trembling fingers. I opened my cabin door, though it was still night, the sky was a sickly yellow, like an old bruise. I bashed against the ship's walls, flung back and forth by the tossing sea as I made my way toward the deck. The ship shivered in the hateful ocean. Twice the floor dropped beneath me suddenly, and I fell. Okay, so leaving that, let's go to analyzing the Rivka text. What are some examples of personification on this page? what human attributes are being applied to non-human objects or things. So going back here, where's some personification 
in this text. Amelia? Um, hateful ocean. Hateful ocean, yeah. The, believe it or not, even if this ocean is stormy, it doesn't hate you. It isn't doing it because it wants to get at you or something. All right? The ocean doesn't have feelings, so it doesn't hate you. So that would be personification, right? It helps us to kind of see how the ocean is acting if we describe the ocean as, well, it's being hateful. Then we think, oh, well, when humans are hateful, they do this, this, and this. So you can kind of compare. See, that's what the author's trying to get you to do when they say hateful ocean. What else is personification in this text, Zoe? Yeah, so you're right. There is like a little bit of simile going on here, right? When they say like, you can kind of see that a little bit. But you're also right, it is personification. Because the sky can't be sick. Sight, the sky does not show sickness, right? That's something that people do. We can get sick, but a sky cannot. Is there anything else in here? Personification. There's one more I can think of. One more in here. We have hateful ocean, the sick sky, the sick sky, and one more. Nobody sees it. Okay. Yep, we got hateful ocean, and we have the sky being a sickly yellow. Wesley. Tossing sea. Okay, tossing. Sea, you could, yeah, the sea doesn't necessarily toss, right? I mean, there, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Marcos? Ships shiver. That's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Ships don't shiver. They don't get cold, right? They don't sit there and shake. But it gives you an idea of what the ship feels like, right? When you can imagine in your mind, because you, you've probably experienced shivering at some point, so you can imagine what the ship must be doing in the ocean, right? If it's shivering. Okay, so when an author writes about an object that does something that only a human can do, it is called personification. Notice that the word in personification is person. What does the personification show in these books? It's a black box. So here we're gonna look at this chart. And we're going to cover some of the things that we already pointed out. And then this one, Elijah's Freedom Road, that's the book, the page that we were referencing for, uh, actually, no, that wasn't the quote. That's the one that we were referencing with the uh, boy escaping the underground railroad. This one I could not find. We don't have it in the library, and we do not have any really good digital versions of it either. So I couldn't find that one. But I decided to write the example down anyway. So here, we talked about how the stars here and the stars hurry out to guide our way. Shows that stars are helpers or guides. That's a personification. Stars don't hear you and they don't hurry, right? They have a time schedule and they just show up when they do. You can't make them go any faster, right? And then ground walking. I don't know about you, but I've never seen the ground walk. People walk, but I don't know of any ground that walks. It shows how unsteady and undependable the ground is. If the ground is walking, we're probably all gonna feel it, right? You could probably imagine maybe that's like an earthquake, right? Yeah. The ground shaking. And then we have ship shivering, which Marcos pointed out, and then the ocean acting hateful. So with the ship shivering, it helps us feel the dread of the ship. And then the ocean acting hateful describes the harshness of the surroundings. You can kind of imagine how the ocean must be acting because you've probably seen people before act hateful. So you can kind of make that comparison, right? Okay. So today, as you are reading your text, be on the lookout for personification. You might find some in your text. If you do, I need you to write that down in your mini lesson response. That's your section two of your notebook, okay? So if you find anything that is personification, write it down in your mini lesson response. All right, so that concludes the lesson. So let me turn off this video real quick.